Well, uh, Peter Attard Montalto is the a senior emerging markets economist at Nomura in London. He joins us now to give us his take. Uh, Peter, thanks indeed for talking to us. So, if anything, there is an appreciation of Treasury's attempts to stick to some spending ceilings here. But the two big concerns are growth and our state-owned enterprises, which are raising eyebrows, isn't it? Exactly. I think the sort of core fiscal, if you like, what Treasury does day to day is still trusted by the agencies, by markets. Um, but the feedback that I got from my recent trip uh, to South Africa really was that it's actually about the, the space the National Treasury operates in, the additional issues that are going to be put on their, um, their sort of uh, – inbox that are really the issues around parastatal. So whilst you can consolidate the budget deficit, you know, to broad primary balance, it's really about the fact that, you know, you could be adding another, you know, five, six percentage points of GDP on the back of that um, in terms of uh, the uh, debt to parastatals. Mm -hmm. Do you think we will actually dip into junk status? And just remind us about how investors on your side of the world digest the gravity of such a ranking. Well, I think South Africans really shouldn't underestimate how important sub-investment grade is as a theme. In my view, South Africa is heading headlong into the path of sub-investment grade, junk rating. Um, policy, as usual, is not enough. The National Development Plan doesn't really exist as a uh, implementing strategy. Um, but really, for me, the, the key about being in sub-investment grade is particularly higher costs for Treasury to borrow, higher costs for banks to borrow that get passed on to households uh, and to SMEs. And that all ultimately feeds back into yet lower growth still, yet lower job creation. Yeah, let's just talk about that. Let's assume we fail to rein in our debt. Do we have the economic stamina to actually meet those rising costs of our repayments, which are inevitable? Well, this is the key question. Is there the political space, really, for South Africa to be able to turn around? There is time. I think the sub-investment grade theme really is more of a 2018 sort of story. There is time to turn around. But the key, I think, really, is that there isn't the sense of panic that you need to be seeing within the Thule House, within the union buildings. Actually, you know, these decisions that the government probably could take on labor laws, etc., take such a long time to go through the sort of tripartite alliance, through these political machinations. Uh, that's ultimately why South Africa is going to fall off the edge of the uh, junk rating cliff because it will simply run out of time prioritizing other things like uh, political balancing and, and the tripartite alliance. How important to you is this fourth quarter growth figure? It will be released early next year. What's your forecast on that one? Oh, sorry, I'm getting funny music in my ear. Sorry, what was the question? Yeah, we, we were talking about how important this fourth quarter growth figure will be. It will be released early next year. What's your forecast on that one? Well, I think the key difficulty for the budget next year really is going to be about uh, further growth constraints coming through. The government's going to be downgrading probably growth. Yet again, it has no contingent reserves really to come through. And that will probably be the trigger for Moody's um, to go after the budget next year in March, say. Um, that's when we'll probably see another down or an outlook downgrade coming uh, at that point. And that's really when both the key agencies at Moody's and S&P will be on the edge uh, of that junk cliff. All right, Peter Tardman-Talto talking to us from London, uh, from Namura. Thanks very much indeed.